Good morning! Welcome to our morning worship and prayer. I just want to encourage you as we worship today from Psalm 63, verses 1 to 4. It says here, O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. Today, let's take time to seek and worship our God who personally knows us by name and who fully loves us. May his steadfast love is better than life, better than anything that this world can offer. Let's worship our Lord this morning. All creation speaks your glory. Angels declare you worthy. You spoke a word and created the earth. The stars are wrapped in praise. The stars are wrapped in praise. We send in all of you. We send in all of you. Here in your presence, we send.
Lord, we thank you for this day that we get to worship you. We thank you for your word that is living and active. Um, we pray, Father, that today will you speak to us, Lord, as we seek you, Lord, and we desire to be in your presence. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Now, what does it mean to live our new life with Christ? Today, I'm going to share from Colossians 3, verses 1 to 4. Paul said, Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Just a bit of a context, Paul was actually exhorting the Colossians in these verses uh, to live godly lives by identifying with Christ and making Jesus really the central focus of their Christian life. In verses 1 and 2, Paul said that you have been raised with Christ so you should set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Not only should we set our hearts, but also our minds on things above, not on earthly things. Do you realize that the very same spirit that resurrected Christ from the dead is now at work inside of us? You know, we too could begin to see the earthly things of this world through Jesus' perspective. Scripture says that we are to set our hearts and our minds on things above. We are to begin to look beyond this world, beyond ourselves, and um, just begin to pay more closer attention to what God is doing and how He is working in us and through us. Uh, we are to set our affection and our thoughts on Christ opposite no, on setting our affection and thoughts on ourselves or on the things of this world. Before, we would pursue our own selfish pleasure, but now, in our new life in Christ, we pursue the pleasures of God. Before, we used to embrace comfort, but now, we willingly embrace sacrifice. Before, we seek ambition, but now we seek to serve. Before, we work on uh, having a successful life. But now, in our new life in Christ, we work on a surrendered life. To live our new life in Christ means really shifting our allegiance and devotion to Him alone. Um, Paul said, in verses 3 and 4, that our old life is now dead. Dead. Wala na. Patay na. And the life that we now have, the life that we are living right now, is hidden with Christ in God. He also said that when Christ, who is our life, appears, then we will also appear with Him in glory. Interesting how Paul beautifully depicted and showed how our new life in Christ now looks like. He said, it is now hidden in Christ. Who is our life? Hidden in Christ, who is our life? You know, Christ is really not an addition to our life. He's not one of the many priorities we have in life, no. Christ is supposed to be our life. Siya yung buhay natin. He is the source, the motivation, and the ultimate goal of our lives. We live to be like Him. The new life we now have, we live through Christ and for Christ. This is really an echo of Paul's declaration in Galatians 2.20. Sabi ni Paul, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, 
but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the gift of the gospel that now we can live a new life in Christ and for Christ. Thank you for the transforming power of your Holy Spirit, O Lord, that enables us to shift our allegiance and our devotion so that we can live our lives in light of eternity. Today, Lord, we ask that will you teach us, teach us how to live hiding behind your power and your presence and your glory so that when people look at us and the choices that we make, our values, our priorities, the quality of how we live our lives, our prayer, O oh Lord, is that it will all point back to you. May you get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We pray that we will decrease as you increase in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. We send an Thank you for joining us. Let me send you off with this blessing from Jude 1, 24 to 25. It says here, To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning and go and live your new life in Jesus Christ.